The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesamento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. We're going to move on here to the uh, first things that we usually check, which is the DAX and also the FTSE. And you'll notice that uh, they've been in a downtrend and had a little bit of a rally overnight, which has continued into our opening so far. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens uh, early today. Now, if we take a look at one other thing this morning before we get started, uh, and I want to talk a little bit about the uh, the gold market. I wanted to mention to you what I think happened in the uh, crude oil market. Um, I'm going to give you uh, my, my heads up, just looking at patterns from the last, uh, uh, from where we were Sunday night. So let me, uh, this is, remember, this is just patterns, folks. It has nothing to do with anything else. But this is a uh, basically a 15-minute chart. And I know it doesn't look like much here, but that little Gartley that happened there at $23 a barrel was a 10% move from $21 a barrel to $23 a barrel. And then you can see what happened over the next two days. Is there's the ABCD structure, and it measures right down to $6 a barrel, folks. So that tells us that we've probably made some type of a bottom in the oil. Now, it ought to have good bottom at $6. I don't know. But they say they can't store it anywhere, so we'll, we'll be able to see. Now, it's going to be interesting to see what they do with the price of gasoline across the country because that would bring gas uh, down to about a dollar and a quarter and uh, some places – probably even under a dollar but if that happens so right now we're trading up around 1380 we did make a 50 percent retracement last night uh, in the crude oil when we got down to 1080 and i think uh, last i saw it was up around 13 bucks so it's moving 10 percent of the time but when you have this it's uh it's pretty crazy uh the final tally on what this guy's lost over in singapore is not out yet but they think it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 4.2 billion dollars and uh, that's a lot of money, but if you can handle that, you're probably still going to be in the game. So we'll have to be able to follow that as we go through the history of what's going on with this. Uh, we'll uh, we'll keep you informed when we fit, hear something, so we'll look at it. Now, uh, on the corn, the corn uh, had a report about ethanol yesterday, and that took our uh, took our stop out on the July corn. So our farming business uh, did not work out. Uh, uh, the way we thought, so we'll be able to. <laughs> yeah, yes, Duffy, you'd have to say 4.2 billion would be a definition of a bad trade. I think it's probably one of the worst ones ever, but we don't know some of them because a lot of these guys, you know, they're big boys. You know, hey, look, BlackRock swings six trillion dollars, so if they lose 4.2 billion in something, it's not a big deal. So it depends on who's sitting at the table. You know, that's a. Uh, that's basically what you're watching here. Now, something interesting did happen last night, and I don't know if it's going to mean very much, but uh, we did have one of those trades that we like to uh, look at, and that was the fact that we had a uh, nice Gartley forming uh, in the gold up there at the 1730 level. We dropped all the way down to 1711 uh, this morning, and then in a matter of about uh, 30 minutes, we went from 17. Uh, 11 all the way up to uh, 1734. Uh, we rallied another uh, $23. We're trading around 1727, I believe, right now. But um, that is a double ABCD and a 61% retracement in a downtrend. If, in fact, it is a downtrend, and we are not 100% sure of that, but we feel strongly that these metals are still in a downtrend. Any move above uh, 1735, I believe. 1736 in the um, the gold would tell you it's most probably getting ready to uh, go a little bit higher. Let's uh, mention here that also that the June contract for crude oil is uh, restricted by most of the CME uh, houses today. So if you want to trade crude oil, you have to switch over to the um, oh. To the um, what you uh, shucks to the to the July contract, 
and the July contract is in backwardation. It's under the price of June, so that it's been it's been in contango for a while, and now it's switched over uh, to backwardation, which we might be getting close to something here. But folks, can you believe this? That, <clears throat> that we were at $69 a barrel back in September, and here we went to minus $40 a barrel. Uh, we'll, minus $40 a barrel means if the person is long that, and that, that's what happened, this guy had to, he can't take, when he takes delivery, there's no place to store it. So he has to pay to get rid of the oil. And um, I don't know if he got down to that minus too much, but I'm sure he got a lot of it uh, minus. And then it was uh, Tennessee, it was 99 cents a gallon in Tennessee. Shut the front door. Marshall, what are you doing down in Tennessee? That's a long time ago. The guy's name was, um, I don't know. You can, you can search it on the Internet. But the name of the, the, the firm was um, Hinlong, E-L-O-N-G. Uh, they own a bunch of banks. And believe me, you know, they, they stuck a whole, they had a lot, they had debits, they had credit everywhere. So in order to have credit everywhere, you have to have assets. So I, mean, I know they got hurt really bad, but this is not going to put them out of business. <laughs> Uh, Duffy just told us that the price of gasoline in uh, in Tennessee was 99 cents a gallon, and he mentioned it's way too low. Okay, I see that. A little bit of humor here. We have to pass that on to all of our jokesters here uh, at TFNN. So uh, we'll be uh, paying attention to that. So if we get above that 1736 level, we could be ready for some more move to the upside. We had some... Uh, uh, those beautiful patterns that we had and some of these things certainly completed, you know, yesterday when we were looking at that uh, that silver contract, I believe. I think we have it right here. Yes, here we are. We had I, – I'm not sure where we're trading. I believe we're up around 15-something uh, in the silver, and uh, there we go here. You'll, you'll see here that we completed that big ABCD down there from 1631. We dropped a buck and a half, and I believe we're trading up around the 15 – 20 level I'm not even sure but um, they're having a little bit of a rally in here we'll see this uh, oh the uh, CNBC has reported a, a one point a eight to one reverse split on USO now the reason why they do a, a reverse split Bo is because that allows that price of that to go way up okay because you know you're you're getting one eighth the, the price of uh, what you're looking at so what what that means is it allows the um, uh, Arizona, dollar twenty-nine. Where in the heck is Ash Fork? That's got to be outside of BF Egypt. Holy cow! Um, the uh, yeah, that's that's all that is. Is they they reverse it? If you remember during the crash, City City Bank re reversed thirty to one, uh, and um, several others did, and that that allows the price to be raised because some of these hedge funds and stuff cannot trade things under a certain price. And also, it also depends on the delisting price. If you get below a certain price, you can't be listed on the exchange, and that's a big deal. That's why they do reverse splits. It gives them the, the ability to try to raise capital and stuff. So at least that's how I remember it, how it used to be. Whether it's that, that way or not anymore, you know, I'm not even sure. So uh, we have Stan Harley as our guest today at 9.30. He's always got some good things, and uh, it's been a while since we've had him on, so that'll be great. And hopefully we're going to have um, uh, Tim Bost uh, either uh, Friday or 877-927-6648. Uh, If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. TFNN is launching an open house for our Tiger's Den. For a limited time, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Tiger's Den. Just enter promo code OPEN at checkout and pay nothing for 30 days while you try out your Tiger's Den membership as part of our open house. With market volatility at an all-time high and people all over the world working from home if possible, TFNN is hosting an open house in our Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is an interactive chat room that runs all day where other Tigers and Tigresses discuss trading ideas with the hosts and members along with charts and current market news as well as live access to the charts the hosts use during their programs join us for the tiger's den open house begin your den membership today by just entering open at checkout and pay nothing while you try things out for 30 days for all the details and to start your den membership today visit the front page of tfnn.com don't miss out on the tfnn tiger's den open house taking place now sign up today Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I'm going to put up a chart here of the uh, silver going over the last 10 days. Uh, if you'll notice here on the far left, you'll see the blue uh, left shoulder and then the right shoulder. And you see the head. You see those dotted lines there? Those are just the uh, the wave or the size cycles between the uh, shoulder and the head and the head and the shoulder. That's a perfect head and shoulders pattern, folks, when you have the time and the shoulders, the right shoulder being lower than the left shoulder. Now, if it's bullish, you'd want that to be uh, just the opposite. Hold on here. We're going to see what we've got here. We're still seeing the silver chart. That you should be seeing the silver chart because that's what I'm talking about. Uh, I hope that's what I'm talking about. Did I not say silver? Okay. Anyway, uh, you'll notice then we made the uh, ABCD structure to the downside, and now you can see that we just made a 61% retracement up there at 1528 uh, uh, in the um, in the silver. So that's making a 61% retracement. Now gold, on the other hand, is you know it's shot up and has taken out the highs and has gone all the way to the 61% retracement, uh, nearly of the whole move. So I'm just showing you this pattern because it does three things. It shows you the importance of the ABCD patterns. It defines what head and shoulders patterns really are, and that's what you need to do. Uh, if you want to challenge that or get, look, get more information, need to get uh, Dr. Andrew Lowe's book, The Non-Random Walk Down Wall Street, and he takes these down mathematically into calculus and all the other stuff that I don't understand. But uh, basically, it's got to be a lot more simple than than that. And that's what I'm trying to do here and show you the simplicity in these patterns because they do three things. One is they define what you're going to have to risk. Two, they are repeatable. And three, they do have some idea of predictability. And that's all you've got. You have to take the responsibility for the stuff that you're looking at. Since we're talking about gold and silver, let's look at gold. This is one of the things that Steve Rhodes is really a specialist in. I wanted to bring it to your attention here because this is gold in different currencies. Now, you'll see here that in, the, in gold price in euro, you see we have shattered the high from 2011 when gold was at 1700 because when you buy it in euros 
you have to pay up for it. And look what's happened. You've had this heck of a move. You can see all these A, B, C, D patterns that are in here. That doesn't change. It just changes in the fact that you're dealing with a different currency. So let's look at a few of these just to, just so you can get a grasp of how, how dramatic it really is. I mean, this is it's really quite spectacular. This next one, of course, which will be the uh, Japanese yen, you'll be able to see here is the same thing. Now, this is related because the dollar has been very, very strong. So you can see here that these are huge moves. Uh, Steve's done a fabulous job describing this in some of his writings, and I think it's uh, it's pretty cool. All right, next one we're going to look at here is the Australian dollar. And, of course, you know, that's been, um, that's been pretty weak, so you can imagine what they have to pay for gold uh, over in Australia. And if you get up and take a look at it, it's trading for about $2,700 uh, an ounce over there compared to what they pay for here. So that's a big difference, folks. But, you know, the standard that we still use, of course, is the um, uh, U.S. dollar. And that's why we're watching it uh, uh, each day as we trade it in dollars and, and nothing else uh, other than that. So I think we need to pay close attention. Folks, we are going to open today. I'm going to give you my two cents worth. Here's where we were on uh, the other night. Remember on the 21st? Let me get this up. This was before the crash. I posted this chart uh, on that day, I remember. That was about uh, two days ago. Uh, you'll notice that uh, well, it was yesterday, actually. We went from a, that was a, the 382 of that whole move from Sunday night came in at uh, 2270 and we went from 2270 to six dollars can you believe that we dropped 21 dollars uh, a gallon in crude oil in just a matter of a very very short time folks that is a outlier event i don't think you're going to see anything like that in my lifetime maybe in your lifetime but not in my lifetime i you know minus forty thousand uh, dollars i remember one of the the big things that happened to, when I was trading down at the Merck back in the 80s is they had a uh, an egg contract. And uh, by golly, you know, if you took delivery of eggs and nobody wanted them, you were in big trouble because eggs get really smelly really fast if they're not refrigerated. And you had to pay a lot of money. Those contracts would go negative. And but then what the, the, the Merck did, they got really smart and they said, you can't trade in delivery until you're looking at it. Marshall is asking the question, is this deflation? Well, uh, Marshall, a deflation in any other word would be yes, but you know, the Fed is throwing a lot of money at this. And the question is, if it doesn't work, yes, Marshall, it will be deflation, or there's a possibility we could go into hyperinflation. I don't see hyperinflation anywhere right now. When you see corn under the, the price of, uh, we've looked at commodity prices and we'll look at them again. They're trying to make some type of a bottom in here, but uh, frankly, you know, you're not always going to be uh, able to see that. Here's the CRB index. Since we're talking about this is uh, basically you know, we're either at a major bottom in here, but you, you you can see the three drive to a bottom that we had. Then we had the rally up to 420. Then we dropped 25 percent all the way down to um, 320. We've gone sideways here uh, for a little bit. But with the crude oil, you know, it's weighted in there. So that's going to that's going to put this down into new lows. So I really think it's it's tough. You know, you know, deflation is going to be based on whether people can get back to work or not. And, you know, what people don't realize is, well, get off my soapbox. Yes, it could be a bear flag, Marshall. You're absolutely right. If people are out of work, when they get this money, they're not going to be interested in consumer spending. They're going to be interested in survival. I, that's my two cents worth. You know, I... I just, uh, <laughs> you know, I came from right out of the Depression era, folks. It was two years out of the Depression when I was born. So I still have the stories very vivid in my mind about what my grandparents and my parents told me about what it was like, you know, during those times there in southern Indiana where they lived off the farm and didn't have any any work to do. And, um, you know, they grew their own vegetables, you know, hunted for their food. I mean, this was back in the old days. And we've got all these millennials out there that they're not ready for this. Now, fortunately, they've got the Internet to keep them going, but, you know, we'll have to go from there. Uh, I do believe that this uh, this uh, flu that we're having is way overblown. I mean, they've literally destroyed the economies of the world who, you know, whatever this flu is, 
Uh, they literally shut it down for so, so much. Um, Mr. Ruby's asking, uh, this bounce above 50% of the drop mean anything for now? It, all it was was just a retracement, Ruby. That's all it, it appears to be. It was absolutely uh, perfect in so many things, and that's why, you know, I was so bearish, uh, you know, coming into this uh, – Coming into Monday is the fact that every one of those, if you just look at the newsletter, I think I, I put out every single major ETF uh, and, you know, the ones for energy, well, not energy, but, uh, you know, the consumer staples and health care and travel and all that other stuff. They were all ABCD patterns, and some of them were incredibly blurish, like the Russell and the transportation. That was just a, it was just nothing more than an ABCD correction. I mean, Apple was the one that was the, you know, because that's the number one, the number one uh, stock in, uh, you know, that everybody trades. And if we take a look at Apple, this basically depicts what was happening to everything in the stock market. And uh, with the exception of two stocks, one was uh, Amazon and the other was Netflix. And they were making 1.618 expansions. We're going to stay tuned for Stan Harley, folks. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento watches the markets 24-7, and now is a great time to try out his daily trading service, Fibonacci 24-7. Larry publishes videos and charts for subscribers throughout the week when warranted, and every weekend he puts out a thorough report covering worldwide markets, futures, commodities, and currencies with Fibonacci retracement levels, possible trading setups and zones, and stops and targets for all recommendations included. Larry applies the principles he's developed over decades of trading while analyzing a variety of markets for subscribers. To see for yourself the types of videos, charts, and analysis that Larry provides for his subscribers, sign up for Fibonacci 24-7 today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. You'll also gain instant access to Larry's archive subscriber webinar from earlier this year. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, uh, I believe we have Stan Harley of the Harley Stock Market Letter on today. Stan, are you with us? Good morning, Larry. Loud and clear. Good morning, golly gee. I look at this chart going back to 1643. I remember when I was trading that tulip bulb mania. 
Boy, this is, uh, folks, take a look at this chart that uh, Stan has posted. It's for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And we started back in the 1700s. Isn't that when the, it wasn't the Dow, but it was the stock market. The Dow didn't start till I think, 1896 or something like that, as I recall. But I'm sorry for interrupting, Stan. You have the mic. Please tell us what you're looking at here, please. Now, what we have is a chart of the uh, Dow Jones Industrials uh, going back to the 1600s, Larry. And I obtained okay. this data from the Foundation for the Study of Cycles years ago. The mm -hmm. U.S. stock market actually started trading in 1792 under the famous Buttonwood tree. Yes. Uh, they, what is yeah. now Wall Street? So mm -hmm. the data on my chart here prior to 1792 is synthesized from the London market. Okay. And, but, but in analyzing this, uh, several things stand out immediately. I found that if I use the major bear market bottom in 1784 is what I call the genesis point. It is really eye-popping uh, in what it reveals, looking both left and right of that date. And that date was very important. That was the end of the Revolutionary War between Britain and the United States. So it was, it was the date that the USA began. Uh, it also uh, coincided with the end of a, a, a major bear market in, in the UK. Uh, so that, that date is very, very important. I've drawn a red vertical line there at the 1784 point, And look left and look right. And notice if we project Fibonacci numbers from that low, both backwards in time and forward in time, it lines up with every single major peak. Uh, the South Sea bubble in 1720, which happens to be 34 Fibonacci times 2, 68. Uh, if you go to the right, about 55 years, you reach the peak in 1835. If you go to the right further, 144 years, actually 145, but it's 144 Fibonacci. It lines up with the 1929 peak. And if you go 233 from that 1784 bottom, um, it lines up with 2020. And I've done a regression modeling of these dates, and it comes out to be exactly 233.0 from 1784, where we topped out wow. here in, in just two Holy months ago. Cow. I've never and seen a chart it, this long. And interestingly enough, uh, if you go back further in time to the Dutch tulip mania, it was 147 years, read Fibonacci 40, 144 from that 1784 bottom. So every single mania going back to 1637 can be defined by the major Fibonacci series, Larry, from 1784. And mm -hmm. we have seen here just a couple of months ago a major financial bubble peak. And mm -hmm. it's not about COVID-19, and I'm not marginalizing in any way the, the seriousness of that. It's all about cycles in Fibonacci. Mm -hmm. And we... Uh, we are, I don't believe history will be any different. I think we are going to have a major, major depression, just like we had following 1720 back in Great Britain, following the 1835 peak, uh, which led ultimately to the Civil War. The 1929 peak, uh, you were talking about just before you and I went on the air, the Great Depression in the 30s. We're going to have another one of those. Uh, and I'm not cheerleading for bad times. I'm the messenger here, but uh, I can see it coming. Um, yeah, I can too, Sam. It's a little, uh, it's a little scary. In fact, they've got the whole world scared here, at least in the United States and some other countries, just with this virus, which I think is not—it's the excuse, but it's not the reason. It's, so, right, right. Every every yeah. every bubble top has its mm -hmm. fundamental mm -hmm. event, its its news headline, and that that's always different. But the cycles, the Fibonacci numbers, uh, you and I have been working with this stuff for for decades. It, it doesn't change. And one can see uh, um, 2020 lines up with yet another one of these in the series. So here we go. Buckle up. Um, okay. It's going, to get, it's going to get much worse before it yeah. gets better. Well, thankfully, we're trading actively. That's a good thing. Now, uh, let's take a look at your next slide that you uh, sent us. It's about the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average uh, uh, compared to what we're looking at now is uh, compared to 29. Is that what that is? Absolutely. I see not only the Fibonacci lineup, but uh, when I overlay the daily patterns of the uh, 1929 peak and the 2020 peak, uh, uh, align them very carefully, and one can see uh, the uh, 
correlation is astounding. Uh, following the 29 high, we sold off fairly precipitously, uh, made, a, made a low, and then, as you can see there, we rebounded. What I've done is I've plotted the 1929-1930 uh, data in black, and the current market through yesterday's close is in blue, and we are following that pattern virtually day for day. Uh, the pattern indicates a, a topping uh, just a couple of days ago, a sell-off, um, a little rebound, which is which is indicated in the 29 chart, and that's what we're probably seeing today. And then we should mm -hmm. continue uh, pick up the decline probably uh, starting tomorrow, and head on down into the uh, end of the month. Wow, uh, that's really an incredible chart. Uh, juxtapositioning I find uh, works for a while, uh, then it then it. Doesn't work, but so far, Larry, uh, the uh, the comparative study to the 1929 top is astounding, absolutely well, astounding. Wow, it sure is. Now you've got one other chart here that's uh, very interesting, and that happens to be the cash S and P chart, and uh, I can see the the perfect A B C D pattern up here. Uh, did it make a 61 percent retracement? Do you know? Um, it did not. Yeah, it missed uh, it by a little bit, didn't it? Uh -huh. It missed it by a little bit. Um, the uh, when it comes up on the screen here, one can see the uh, the daily chart of the S and P 500, and this is uh, current through yesterday's close. And uh, what we can see there, Larry, is the uh, the market uh, rallied up to the 50-day moving average, which is uh, depicted in blue. And oftentimes, uh, when there it is, and when a market rallies, uh, it hits that downtrending moving average, and it uh, that often serves as resistance. So it backs off from there, does some chop chop. Uh, of course, no market's going to go up until that thing flattens out and turns positive. Turns the slope turns positive. That has yet to occur. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I see it's undergoing some back and fill here between the declining 50-day and the rising 15-day, which I've plotted there in green. Um, and if the pattern holds out, we should uh, begin to renew the downtrend starting tomorrow, maybe Friday latest. And I think we're going to head down into the end of the month. But the pattern then would suggest uh, we won't take out the uh, the March 23rd, the spring equinox lows uh, for some time. We're going to be in a fairly large trading range uh, for the balance of this year. But ultimately, we will break the March 23rd lows. Are we going to be in a trading range like crude oil? <laughs> no, that's a different story altogether. But, but, uh, but that, that, that the collapse in crude uh, just lets all of us know that yes, bad times are ahead. Yep, and, that's uh, it. You got that right. Listen, uh, Stan, can you stay with us? We have a questions about gold and also about treasury bonds. Would you be able to stay with us a little longer? Absolutely. Okay, we'll be right back, folks. Stan Harley, the Harley Stock Market Letter. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. 
The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks. We're spoke, talking with Stan Harley, the Harley Stock Market Letter. We have two questions, Stan. The first one is, what is your opinion on Treasury bonds? Are you still bullish as you once were? Um, long term, I am bullish on the bond complex, but I think uh, in, in the short term, I think uh, metal, the, the bond market is probably going to sit within a trading range between what we saw oh, about four or five weeks ago, where we got up to uh, oh, the 185 area and uh, the area in, in the summer of 2016, that high comes in around 175. We're kind of stuck in that range right now. I think we're going to stay there for a while. But longer term, I see bonds heading higher and uh, interest rates heading lower still. Lower mm -hmm. still. So you're in the camp of negative interest rates then because we're so almost, almost negative now. <clears throat> I'm not sure I would take it that far. But I think interest rates are going to get exactly how low they're going to go. I can't tell you that. Mm -hmm. uh, if I could, I would be a trillionaire. <laughs> but uh, but looking at the timing functions, uh, I've done the analysis, the Fibonacci uh, work, and my work says uh, bonds are going to head higher, interest rates heading lower into the latter part of 2022. So for about mm -hmm. another two and a half years. Wow. You know, Stan, since we started this show, uh, just about, uh, you know, 40 minutes ago, we've had a 40% move in crude oil. <laughs> <laughs> Not that we're having any volatility or anything. The second question that we're having is about the uh, gold market, Stan. What's your feeling on gold? Uh, metals complex, I think longer term, I think you're going to see substantially higher prices in gold. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I, I, I actually didn't believe that several months ago, but uh, having sat down and looked at some long-term patterns, I can see it very clearly. Gold is going to go substantially higher. Mm-hmm. Okay, that makes uh, makes good sense. Listen, I want to thank you for being our guest today. I hope you're safe up there in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, because I know they're starting to uh, open up some of the things here in the next few days, and I hope it's not too early. I don't think it is. I I, I think this fear is worse than the, uh, the disease myself, but uh, that's my opinion only. But be sure you take care of yourself, my friend, and we really enjoy you having you on the show, and I love that chart of going back to seeing those bubbles and the the fact that it lines up with those 144 uh, cycles is uh, it's just truly amazing and it's and it's so uh, spot on to each one of the most uh, major things you remember in 1835 that was uh, Andrew Jackson and that was the very first uh, Federal Reserve and yes. uh, that's right that was very interesting if you if, if you just google 1837 it, the panic mm -hmm. of 1837 was a severe yeah. decline here in the United States 90% yes. of banks and railroads went out of business.
Yep, that's for sure. And, and Josh, stop and think that was before railroads got even be, to be popular. So <laughs> it's really interesting to see these things happening. So that's pretty cool. Listen, my friend, thank you again so much, and we'll have you on again soon. And please be safe up there, okay? Look forward to it. Thank you, Larry. You bet. You bet. Folks, that was Stan Harley in the Harley Stock Market Letter. All you have to do, go in is Google it. He's uh, one of the people that is in the top 10 of stock market timers. Uh, I believe he was number three last year. Uh, I know he's up in the top five because we've had four of the five people as our guests here. So uh, pay attention to what he's saying. I think he's a pretty smart guy. But like everybody else, you know, we all make mistakes. And the, quick, the quicker you realize what your mistakes are, the better off you are. I wonder how that fellow in Hong Kong or Singapore would be feeling right now, given the fact that uh, he was— uh, uh, you know, uh, $4 billion uh, poorer yesterday than, than he was when he came in Sunday night. So uh, you got to protect yourself, folks, because if you don't, nobody else will. That's absolutely for sure. Now, let's move on here. And I wanted to show you a chart from my good friend, uh, Jim Bartolioni, one of my old uh, friends from uh, the old days of the old Navy, uh, uh, the F, uh, F-16 uh, uh, squadron. I was fortunate enough to trade the whole squadron. There was uh, see, Rucher, Rooster, Bucky, um, Rooster, Bucky, the fireman and Bart, and you can see these big ABCDs here, and uh, you'll you'll see here that uh, he was looking for some type of a bounce in here. Now I believe this is crude oil in a monthly, and this is not up to date, folks. This is, it doesn't see where it says more downside to go. Uh, well, there is certainly that because we went negative forty dollars a barrel. And all that means is the person could not take delivery, and he had to destroy the oil. They take it out, and they bear, they usually bury it, uh, and that's usually uh, what happens. But uh, you know, <laughs> it's happened in a few other things. But how do you get rid of a thousand gallons of uh, of oil? And not, not only that, when you've got, uh, let me see, you've got about five million of those. It makes it pretty uh, pretty tough to do it. So keep in mind that we live in interesting times, which is the old Chinese curse. So we'll look at it. I wouldn't trade that USO if they let me trade for free. Uh, that's an ETF, and I don't like ETFs, so I, I don't even, you know, I mean, there's just nothing there. Uh, well, there's probably something there, and, and BlackRock is because that they're the the uh, the ETF runner. They're they're not going to let this thing go under because there's too many people that have it. But uh, we'll. You know, like they say, you're not trading oil when you're trading U.S. oil. You're trading the, the front months futures option, and now they've got to come in, and they've got to hedge themselves and things, so it's not a pretty good thing of what's going on. Uh, I, I thought USO was run by BlackRock. I thought that someone told me that, and I believe them. So if I'm wrong, I guess you're right, G7, because if you're telling me that, that you're absolutely no more about it than I do. I'm just repeating what I heard, and you came out with that so quick, so I'll double-check that. So uh, I wonder who did that ETF then, because they've run most of the of the ETFs, but oh, that's neither here nor there. That was Mr. Z that told us that. Uh, Oil services up 4%. Okay, well, we hit $16 a barrel. We've actually uh, had a $10 a barrel rise yeah, in crude oil from our price. At uh, Let's just take a quick look at that ETF, and let's just see where we are here. Here, here was where we were uh, yesterday. Let's get it up here. When we hit $6 uh, an ounce. <laughs> Six dollars a barrel, and we've gone from six dollars a barrel. Now we've rallied up to sixteen. We're right at the sixty-one percent retracement of the high we made uh, back at uh, twenty-two hundred. So uh, let's see. The ABCD structure on this could take you to uh, eighteen. We could make eighteen dollars a barrel just on this ABCD pattern in the uh, thing. That would be up. Uh, Wow, that would be heck of, heck of a move. But anyway, remember, you can't trade to June, folks. If you're going to trade, you have to trade to July. I keep the June up here because uh, it does two things. One, it prevents me from trading the, uh, the the thing because that's what I'm watching, and I don't want to get involved with that at all. So that's uh, the main thing to uh, keep in mind. But there will be an ABCD up there at the $18 level. And uh, you know what I should do, and that's what I will do, is when I get back from the break here, which we're going to take pretty quickly. I'm going to get up here. It's uh, 15 now. Let me get up here to take a look at this uh, so we can quickly look at this. Just give me one second here. 
and uh, get this old crude oil up here for the old uh, June Areno. And I think we do the 15 minute and we'll be able to see it pretty easy. Ah, there we are. Boy, oh boy, look at this, spot on. Perfect ABCD, it's showing it right now. Let's get it up here. And let's see what the retracement is from the high we made on Saturday night or Sunday night. Uh, get it up here. We're trading. Oh, my goodness. Believe it or not, if you believe in Monday's numbers, I think you're going to like this. 877-927-6648. And stay tuned for the answer in crude oil. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover, and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I posted the chart of the June uh, crude oil. Uh, it's dropped a dollar and a half a barrel since we've been talking. We had a high of 16.18. Now we're at 14.40. 14.30, and uh, that means something because that was a 50% retracement of the high we made back on Sunday night when we were trading at uh, oh, $24 a barrel or something like that. And uh, so watch the next retracement. It'll be interesting, but we've made a what I think is a pretty major bottom here at $6 a barrel in oil. Folks, do you realize what's going to happen in Saudi Arabia with $6 oil? They're not going to be able to uh, take care of their citizens like they usually do. Well, they can because probably the cost of production is a buck and a half. But uh, this is going to hurt a lot of people in Russia.
Russia, it's going to hurt a lot of people in Iran, and it's going to hurt a lot of people all over the world because it's going to destroy some very essential businesses, and that's what's tough. There's no way to, to sell the oil because the, the, the uh, cars are not running, the airplanes are not running, the trains are not running, and so they're not using the stuff. They have no other place to put it. You built a great demand for it, and now what's happened, the demand has gone to zero and the supplies continue to increase. That causes a very, very bad situation. So keep that in mind uh, when you're doing things. Look what happened in hogs. Uh, someone asked a question about the uh, July uh, corn. Uh, there was a report yesterday related to ethanol, which is 30 percent corn. And basically what happened, uh, we got stopped out of that position and uh, we'll keep uh, going uh, in that direction. So we'll we'll see if that's going to be the uh, if that's going to be the case. Anyway, we'll watch that as we uh, go through these charts tomorrow. I'm hoping to have Tim Boston as our guest. And on Friday, uh, we're hoping to have uh, Bill Meridian on for a cameo appearance because of the move we've had in some of these things. He'll give us an idea, possibly in oil, what he's hearing and what he's seeing in the oil market might be helpful to us when we're looking to trade. Remember, you're not supposed to be trading the June oil. Most of the firms won't allow you to do that. You have to switch over to July. Please use stops, folks, because the slightest little bit of news will move these things, you know, $1,500 like we've just seen here uh, when we hit the 50% retracement at 16.12. We're now trading at 14.63. So let's pay attention. 877-927-6648. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless.